All branches of the armed forces need the trained minds of youth. In consultation with faculty and advisory officers, students are guided to the specialized training they need for war work. Virginia's Dawn Patrol, composed of voluntary students who are eager to equip themselves for advanced military training to follow. This is the spirit of young men today. On the home front, recent times have marked a historical peak in efforts to resist and avoid the military draft. On November 6, 1965, New York City was the site of yet another protest against the Vietnam War, this time punctuated by four men burning their draft cards. The burning of draft cards as a form of protest against the war further polarized American society into anti-war and pro-war groups in a new way. Ultimately, people sat around the dinner table and talked about it because even within families there was conflict. So, whereas, just as a hypothetical, the younger person generally might have been anti-war and the parent in the family might have supported the war, and so I'm sure there was conversations around many dinner tables in the family about the issues and debates. No, there was no question about that. So I think the burning of the draft card might have stimulated some of those family conversations and debates and arguments in some cases. It shows the times how escalated emotions were. It was a very unhappy time, and, it, and emotions were way up there. The young men who were passionate enough to burn their draft cards were mostly affluent and college educated. I'd say my generation, um, we're a bunch of spoiled brats. And at that point, we were a bunch of kids, college age largely. We never had to do much of anything in our life we didn't want to do. Clad in suits and clean-shaven, these men hope to lend credibility to their cause. As the reputation of these protesters grew in stature and the divisive impact of their acts became clear, the government took up a strong stance against them. A federal law was quickly enacted that made the destruction or mutilation of draft cards a crime. Although the burning of draft cards was not an effective method of draft avoidance during the Vietnam War, it was unique as being a deliberate, public protest designed to attract the attention of the media and highlight the oppression of the government against upstanding drafted youth in an effort to appeal their cause to a wider faction of Americans. Draft card burning was one of many forms of protest and resistance. Anti-war groups organized rallies and strikes, though some members of the public remained skeptical of their motives. There didn't seem to be limits defined, you know, and, and and it's put out as a moral issue, yet people were truly acting in their own self-interest. This was popular, it was the thing to do, and, you know, this is what I could see the motivation behind a great many people. When it came to avoiding the draft itself, more drastic measures were available. If I didn't get a deferment, either through physical or 4F or uh, teaching, you know, in the back of my mind, fortunately didn't reach that point, I was thinking, okay, well, there's Canada, there's always Canada. Often, people were able to get excused from being drafted due to connections they or their family may have had. See, back then, it was a draft, and rich kids, who I believe began the protest thing, got very insensitive. They never had to do much in their life they didn't want to do. I don't want to go over there and get killed, and I got a girlfriend, and I don't want to leave here and go do that, and that's for ordinary people. And that, that really is where the protesting began. Those who burned their draft cards were fully aware that it wouldn't prevent them from being drafted. Which were you more concerned with, making a statement about the war and about the draft, or avoiding the draft? Oh, making a statement? Yeah. I mean, look, let me tell you the truth of the matter. I was classified 4F. There's no way they were going to call me up. Mm -hmm. I was out of the, you know, childhood diseases, whatever it was, but I was out of the picture. I went into this thing, in a sense, one of the reasons I did it is because they could not accuse me 
I'll try to avoid the draft. That didn't stop them. Notable burnings took place around the country. Reverend Jack Mendelson described his thoughts on the protests that took place inside the Arlington Street Church in Boston. It made national news and, like so many other anti-war actions, divided the country along pro-war and anti-war lines. That is, it probably contributed to the polarization around the issue. Draft card burners were also fully aware of the risks involved with their actions. In response to the first instances where draft cards were burned, a stricter federal law was enacted in August 1965, punishing anyone who knowingly mutilates or knowingly destroys their draft card. I mean, that this guy should go to jail for burning a draft card is ridiculous. You know, the uh, Congress made fools of themselves by making it a felony to right. burn a draft card. And we said, aha, we're going to move right in, uh -huh. you know, and put them on the spot. But that wouldn't have led me to risk five years in jail, mm -hmm. you know. And, well, I knew that it wouldn't be five years. It was six months, you know. The judge was not insane. But uh, still, it's six months in jail. After the passing of the new federal law, the government indicted 46 men for burning their draft cards, leading to four major court cases. The issue that was important to the prosecuting lawyers was to prove that we really burned our draft cards. We come and say, look, we really burned our draft cards. Oh, no, no, we must prove it. The draft card burners anticipated this increased incidence of persecution and used the government's attention to gain further exposure. Draft card burners often tried to separate themselves from the stereotypical image of an anti-war protester. By dressing in suits and trying to appear formal, they hoped that the public and the government would take them more seriously. Well, sometimes you'd see people with um, suits on who, you know, uh, more traditional uh, person burning a draft card also, you know, who were opposed to the war. But it would generally I associated mostly with college students, um, not necessarily with hippies. One of the fundamental challenges the draft card burners faced was how they were portrayed in the media. And the media was on top of it. I think some of the issues were over um, dramatized by the media. I really? think it brought it right into your home. And I think to some extent it was good. People got information. On the other hand, I think it ex exacerbated some of the differences. Um, Draft card burning's prevalence helped it to make its way onto magazine covers and onto the stage with the musical Hair, which featured a scene depicting it. What was the public reaction that you experienced? Like? Well, you know, <laughs> the public uh, just likes to be entertained. I mean, there are some people who are sincere, but um, we were on the front pages of all the New York newspapers. Those who chose to engage in anti-war protest and draft card burning had to be careful due to the great amount of attention that they received. And the reason is, is that we had too much confidence that the press would give us a fair deal. Draft card burners risked confrontation with groups on the other side of the spectrum. And you had people driving around in cars, especially maybe truckers, with big American flags on them, flapping. And you know, signs on them, something about, if you're a protester, don't be in the crosswalk or you're dead. You know, this kind of stuff. I, I mean, you know, outward threats of violence against people who were obviously protesting. There was one unfortunate thing where there was a, one of the peace workers um, went into a bar and um, they learned that he had been involved in that demonstration. He hadn't burned his card. They beat him up and he died. Although protesters ran a high risk by engaging in their resistance publicly, they felt it was necessary to bring greater awareness to the issues they cared deeply about. Throughout the history of Vietnam War protests, the use of draft card burning as a form of resistance stands out for its divisive impact and strength, as a symbol of the fortitude of those who spoke out against the war.